It's back through school time and a lot of us looking for a budget PC. Paladin sent me their new W04 mini PC which sells for around $250 and for the price packs great specs. Hit the like button and let's check it out. It arrived in this box, you can see packaging is on point here, inside we have a manual, the mini PC itself, the first impression it is lightweight but feels solid and I like the sticker with the bias buttons. Let's check the ports, we have a power button, two USBs, type C, audio jack and even a CMOS reset hole. Nice set of ports on the front and it has a glossy finish for style. The rest of the case is black plastic with a matte finish. On the bottom the PC has an intake and you can see the turbine fan. Nice rubber legs for stability. Ability. On the side we have more cooling openings and on the back we have another pair of USBs, display and HDMI for graphics, two LAN ports and the DC power port. I reviewed the Paladin mini PC in the past and just like that one, this one has a magnetic top panel so you can access the internals easily. Very nice feature. You can see we have a 16GB stick here, which is good amount and we have a second slot available for the upgrade. On top we have our M.2 storage, they added a heatsink, I'm not a fan of the rubber bands holding it but they added a tape as well so it's good. Overall the design and the build quality are great. From the accessories we have a power adapter with a barrel jack, it's around 90 watts. Then we have a metal bracket with the screws in case you want to mount PC behind your monitor and we also have SATA upgrade cable which is nice. Really good value for the price so far, let's power it up. I'm pairing it with a 1080p monitor and the setup is pretty easy. We need a power cord, an HDMI and peripherals. I'm using a Logitech G305 for the mouse, it's a very reliable mouse and for the keyboard the Meiji mechanical keyboard, one of the best selling budget ones on Amazon. The setup turned out to be pretty compact, booted into Windows 11 right away, it usually asks for the Microsoft account but it looks like we got an older version here. The system looks clean but for easier update you can go to the system recovery and reset PC with the cloud download. If you have some concerns this is a great way to reset the system, it's gonna take some time and you get the latest most secure version. After the update I checked windows updates again and after the final reboot we are done with the setup. Let's check what kind of specs we are working with. On the board we have a Ryzen 5600H which is a 6 cores 12 thread CPU with 3.3 GHz base speed and 16 MB of L3 cache. For around 45 watts power consumption it has decent performance. It also has a pretty good iGPU which handles the system. Next we have 16 GB of RAM, it is DDR4 works on 3200 MHz in single channel. Considering it is a budget PC, having 16GB from the box is actually a great value. And you saw how easy it is to upgrade. If you ever want 32GB, you can just add another 16GB stick in the empty slot. Then we have a 500GB SSD from Peloton. It showed good speeds, 3200 read and 2600 write. Capacity wise, it is a comfortable minimum that should be enough for many tasks. PC also comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. I can say it worked well and connected everything I needed smoothly. Well let's get to the benchmarks. First I ran the Cinebench and I'm actually surprised with the result. CPU scored 8290 points, which I think is impressive for a budget PC. Next I ran the 3 Mark benchmark and got 978. Not a mind blowing number but we can still game with that, which is coming. Temps are very good, CPU stayed around 55 degrees and GPU around 50 for the most part. Before we get to the game gaming tests, I wanna say that based on my experience setting up the games and using this mini PC for general browsing, I could most definitely recommend it for any type of office work. It is responsive, handled many tabs easily and runs 4K videos. Moving to the games, for gaming it's better to install the AMD Adrenaline for iGPU, just get it from the official AMD website. Let's start with a light game like Valorant, this game would always find a way to annoy me with a secure boot. By the way we have a simple bias here here, the only thing I never seen the firmware update tab, looks like you can update BIOS with that. Anyway Valorant is running pretty well, all settings are auto set to low and I'm getting more than playable around 130 fps. I had some micro freezes in the beginning but after a while they are gone and the frame time is smooth. In CS2 with the lowest settings and if assigned performance mode I got 60 fps but with the horrible freezes. After some time they also went away and the game is playable. Although the frame Frame time is still not perfect for a competitive game like CS. Moving to Fortnite, let's give a chance to auto best settings. It sets DirectX 12, low settings and 100% 3D. 
3D. The game runs at around 20 FPS with that, and you can see how bad the frame time graph is. In the settings, they added new performance mode, which promises to be better than the old one, so let's try it out. I would say it works well, I got 55 FPS with the ok looking frame time. The game is definitely playable now. Let's check the legacy performance mode as well. The game is now running at around 60 FPS with a slightly better frame time. We can even get some Razer's 270s. So the OG performance mode works better here. Overall, this mini PC is obviously not made for gaming. But for a budget PC that you need for office, studying, browsing and some light gaming, it's a solid choice. Check out the link in the description, use the promo code to get a little discount and I'll see you in the next one.